What's up guys, this is Nick from Arc City Poker. And in today's video, we're gonna be continuing the how to beat live low stakes poker series with today's topic covering bluff catching. So as far as bluff catching goes, you shouldn't be doing it a whole lot in live low stakes games. A lot of times the most exploitative uh, thing you can do against your opponents, like the the way to maximize your EV against them or you know basically exploit them is to not bluff catch because their bluffing frequencies just aren't going to be high enough. So I would say overall, this is not how you make money in these games. It's about extracting value. And I think a lot of you guys know that. There are going to be spots though where you do need to do some bluff catching to protect your range, to pick off empty ranges. You don't just want to just fold over and over and over because some of the regulars let's say you guys do have some decently competent opponents in your games, maybe even you have a couple pros or something, against these opponents, they're going to be capable of, of bluffing. And like, especially like your loose, aggressive opponents, even if they're bad. So there are going to be some situations where you do need a bluff catch. And you're going to need to know a few things, I think, to keep in mind to really be able to be efficient at this and to not just be a call station or turn yourself into a call station. So a couple things to keep in mind. The most important thing is simply just ranges and like range advantage. And I knew in, I know in a couple of the last videos I've been talking about how I want to mention range advantage a little more often. I think I do it a lot anyway, but I did say in the next few weeks I, I kind of want to start mentioning it more and more in each video. But it's important to know who has the range advantage and to simply know that, you know, what does my opponent's range look like? And can he actually credibly represent what he's trying to say he has. So for example, let's give you guys, I guess, a quick hand example. Let's say that you have an, a loose aggressive opponent that limps in middle position. And let's say you're in late position with ace 10 suited and you decide to try to isolate him and you raise, and then he calls. So right away, you should be thinking when he limp calls, that takes away a lot of the top of his range. And when the flop comes, let's say it comes ace king six with two diamonds, Let's say he check raises your C bet. So if we talk about range advantage here, you simply have a quite a large range advantage because you can have the nuts in your range and your opponent cannot. And that is a very important concept as far as uh, I guess you'd call it nutish equity or like the ability to have the nuts when your opponent can't. And that's because if your opponent can't have the nuts in their range and you can, then that makes a lot of your hands that become bluff catchers pretty darn strong. And it'll be much more efficient for you to either call down or, or possibly even uh, try to get the money in on the flop there. It, I, I don't want to get into that scenario because there's different scenarios where it, it, it will kind of depend. But you, when your whole range is pretty much turned into a bluff catcher, you're often just going to be calling more often than not. So kind of beside the point though, so let's say on that ace-king... Uh, six texture, I think I said with two diamonds. When he check raises here, what he's trying to represent is pretty much like two pair plus because that board texture should hit you pretty well. And it's going to be really hard for him to do that because, like we said, he can't have aces or kings in his range. He can't have ace king. Even pocket sixes is a hand that a lot of loose aggressive opponents will open with a raise. So that hand might not even be in, in there either. So we're often looking at like ace six and maybe king six, but maybe not. If it's a decently competent loose aggressive opponent, then king six probably won't be in his limp calling range. So we're looking pretty much at like ace six, and that's about it. And in this spot, what that means is his range is pretty empty. And because he can't have the nuts and you can, your ace 10 becomes much stronger. And his likely hands are going to be diamond draws, stuff like... Uh, I guess maybe like if he for some reason was limping like queen jack or like queen 10 if he had gut shots. So it's often going to be like diamonds and like gut shots, especially if it's like a bad loose aggressive opponent, then he can have a, a good amount of combos of those types of hands. So in that spot, you would definitely want to continue because he just can't really have the nuts and you can, and that's going to really make all your bluff catchers that much stronger. So I think that that's a pretty simple example. And I, I think just something to keep in mind for you guys moving forward is when, you're, when your range, pretty much your entire range, gets turned into a, a bluff catcher, even the hands that are you know very good, just think to yourself, can my opponent actually have the nuts here? Think about the action pre-flop up to you know the flop and beyond that. 
just think about what kinds of hands your opponents can and cannot have. Can they actually credibly represent what they're trying to tell you they have? And if they can't and you can have those hands, then you really shouldn't be doing a whole lot of fully at all. So that's going to be the exception. You will do some bluff catching in these live low stakes games. Just keep in mind the opponents. If it's a very tight opponent, ABC opponents, if they if it's hard for them to credibly rep what they have, but you have played with them enough to know that they're just never bluffing in that spot, then they pretty much probably just have a good hand. And if it's better than your hand, and you know you don't have the right odds to continue, or you don't have that many outs slash the odds to continue, you know the right amount of equity, then you can just let it go, and that's how you exploit them. But if you have loose opponents or opponents that are capable of bluffing and you know this, then keep those things in mind. Keep in mind who can have the nuts, like who has that nutish equity, and that works hand-in-hand -hand with range advantage. And I think that'll really help you guys as far as bluff catching in live low-stakes games go. So if you have any questions or comments about this topic, let me know as always. Until next time, this is Nick from Arch City Poker. Take care.